So today we're going to be talking about the future of building sites with SEO and how to monetize them properly, but how to squeeze more money out of the sites you actually have. Joined with Kazra Dash today. Hello. And basically we'll be looking at different options to monetize your website because obviously there's all this craziness with AI overviews, HCU updates, a lot of negativity in the industry, but I think it's just the way that you monetize the site, the strategies that you have on your site that need to change. So personally, and I'm just getting it straight out there, I think the days of just relying on ads to make money on a website are pretty much over. What's your take? There's always going to be caveats to that, right? But in, in general speaking, yeah, I, I don't think you can just rely on one income source because again, if you get hit by, for example, a Google algorithm update, then that income source, which is ads is completely gone and you can't try and do another thing to, to get that traffic back. If that makes sense. Yeah, the way that I see it, and I've said it many times on the channel already, is if you're purely going for informational terms in your keyword research strategy, or even just with topical maps, then you, you onto a losing streak because AI is only going to get better. The responses that you get in AI reviews are going to improve, I think, over the next few months as it gets rolled out to a billion people this year. And so if you're just focusing on informational keywords, for example, then you're setting yourself up for failure, right? It's only going to backfire long-term. It's pretty much dead. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. So for example, personally, for us, like what we've seen working ring right now is going after stuff that we can monetize with our agency because we know what the LTV of an average client is. And so if we just generate one or two clients and it's a high ticket sale, then we're winning whatever we do. And we don't have to get a lot of traffic to make a lot of money. Yeah, I, th I think that's the biggest difference between what you do and what a lot of content website owners do, because you actually provide a service or a product, for example, in some cases it might be a SaaS, let's say, but if you, if you're not actually providing any of that, you're going to have a hard time to say the least, because if you are just, let's say, for example, a content website, there's nothing different between you and let's say a, just a regular dictionary. I'm, I'm sure you've probably searched in Google, what does this word mean, right? Because somebody's used it. You don't know what the meaning is. You want to know that what the meaning is at that point, you, that's essentially just another content website, a dictionary, right? And in time, what we probably will start to see is questions like that, just being pulled in by SG. Uh, and again, a lot of people probably won't click on um, the SG, especially for those te terms, they're, they're, pro they're probably just going to search that, get the answer and then just leave. So you need to be providing something of value, um, for people to actually click onto your website and, and get that product or service. Yeah. It's basically like you're just actually building a proper business, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. The opportunities that I see in 2024, e-commerce, because again, you actually have a high value product that someone's going to buy. And so the average amount of money you're going to make per visitor that comes to your website is going to be far higher than yeah. if you go after, again, like monetizing with ads or trying to make money with affiliate commissions and stuff like that. It's just, I, I think those days are numbered. Yeah, definitely. Like I would actually like to be proven wrong in this. So anybody watching, please correct me if I am wrong, but I haven't seen an e-commerce site get hit by HCU and Again, it probably goes back to point number one that we were making. They're probably providing a service or a product and they are actually a, a real business. Now, another thing that I want to touch on that you've just mentioned as well is the, if you are potentially an e-commerce store owner, or if you are looking to set up an e-commerce store, one thing that you should be obviously focusing on is upsells and cross sells. Not many people do this, but let's say you're selling leather shoes, for example. If you can on checkout upsell people like a, a leather po polish kit or a, like a leather polish, um, for the actual shoe and stuff, then you're just going to up the actual, um, value of that customer, the average order value, which again is super important. You can reinvest some of that money back into your SEO or your PPC or what, whatever you're looking to do. So yeah, definitely look to set up e-commerce stores. If, if you guys are 
potentially lo looking into it. It's a definitely a massively missed opportunity for for a lot of content website owners because the the thing is with content sites or those people that fall into that category, they already are doing the hard part. They're scaling out the content, they're building the links, doing the actual products and potentially setting up the e-commerce stories. That I would probably say that that's the easy part. Yeah, that's it. Like setting up the funnels, like you can do that in a weekend. Getting yeah. the traffic, that takes years sometimes. Because if you're already getting traffic to your website, you're already ranking, that's a really hard bit. Just monetizing it, you can change it over a weekend. Like you can set up a new info product, you can create a new course, easy stuff. Yeah, definitely. And I, th I think that's probably the, the biggest missed opportunity for a lot of these, these website owners. They just need to attach themselves as to being more up the, up the ladder value, if that makes sense. Because affiliates, like you, you don't own anything. You don't own the actual customer data. You don't own the actual product. You don't own the upsell, the upsell, like the flow for that, the funnel. In some cases, you don't even own the traffic. Google can literally just pull the rug underneath you. Whereas if you're actually the go-to person, the end product, let's say, it's going to be really hard because if, let's say, for example, let's say you sell iPhone cases or you, yeah, iPhone cases. If they, if Google decides to literally destroy every single, or let's say what they've done with content sites, right? Let's say they've wiped out 40% of content websites. If they wipe out 40% of product-based stores, what are they going to replace it with? They can't replace it with anything. They need the products. Whereas with the actual traffic, they can replace you whenever they want. Yeah, that's it. I don't, actually, I don't see it as a traffic problem. I think it's a business model problem. Definitely. Like you, you're just not squeezing enough money out of the traffic you get. Yeah. I, I, I would agree with that. Like the amount of website owners that I speak to that they aren't doing any form of other advertising. They're not getting Facebook ads traffic. Even if you don't want to set up like a cold Facebook ads audience, you can always do retargeting. So people that have visited your website, but they've not actually potentially clicked your affiliate links or purchased something like you need to remember that every single website has got a conversion rate, a rate that people like people essentially click through to purchase your product or click your affiliate links and stuff. Right. Now let's say out of 100 visits, you end up getting three people that convert onto your affiliate links or, or sorry, click onto your affiliate links. You need to be thinking, how can I get that to 5%? Because right now for every hundred people, only, only three people are turning into affiliates or people that you're sending uh, through to affiliate deals. So if you can up that number, then it, it will definitely help. And you need to also remember sometimes people might be, I don't know, at work, um, searching for a product and they might just be on their lunch break. It might be coming up to the end of their lunch break and they're like, actually, do you know what? I'll purchase this product later. And they might end up forgetting about you naturally. It happens all the time. Now, a, per a perfect strategy to do to get people back onto the website is obviously retargeting. Again, I've not seen a lot of websites do that. Yeah, that's it. And I think if you look at a lot of the biggest companies in SEO, like SEO industry is a great example of this. If you look at the biggest brands in there, they don't just focus on SEO. Like they're getting clients from YouTube, from Twitter, from Facebook ads, retargeting, et cetera. And I think that's the best way to do it. And sometimes it's actually your website that's the last touch point. So like people yeah. already have a relationship with you on YouTube, they follow you on LinkedIn, they follow you on Twitter personally, and then eventually six months or 12 months they go to your website. You just yeah, need to rank them at branded traffic. I, I, like I've seen it with my own personal website, like the website that I've got. People will say, I've watched 10 of your videos and now I've decided to book in with a call with you. And it's, wow, you've watched 50 odd minutes or maybe one hour plus of my YouTube videos. And they're like, yeah, it's like, that's a lot of touch points prior to even getting in contact with me. Yeah. The other thing I think is like, if you look at, and again, I want to use the SEO industry because I think a lot of people here watching this will be familiar with it. But if you look at all the people that you follow in the SEO industry or you buy from, or you're interested in. It's usually people, like it's usually a personal brand that you're attached to. And so I think it's not just about improving the business model. It's not just about squeezing more money from the traffic that you get. 
But I think as well, just putting yourself out there more and putting a face to the brand will help your business and take it to another whole, to a whole new level in terms of- Yeah, definitely. Hey, hey Trefs do it with, is it Sam O, I believe? Yeah, Sam O, Tim Solo as well. Yeah. And the thing is like, whenever, although Ahrefs gets a lot of slack and stuff like that, or sorry, flack, they- Sam O, whenever he releases a video, like I actually quite enjoy watching his videos because he, he's always talking about some new feature that Ahrefs has added or uh, potentially like um, how, how to do keyword research, stuff like that. And I, I quite like enjoying his YouTube videos because he opens up a, a different angle on how to do a certain thing or potentially a new service or a new product. And uh, even though I already have an Ahrefs um, account and stuff like that, I could see why that would be pleasing for somebody that's not got an Ahrefs account because he might show like a cool feature that the product has. And you're like, oh, actually, I need to can cancel my set license to go over to Ahrefs because they've got these 10 new cool features that Sam's done videos on. So yeah, building a personal brand around your service or product can definitely help as well. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a paradigm shift because a lot of people think in terms of you've got to have a website. It's got to be nicely designed. You've got to rank on Google. But actually, sometimes it's where we try and put everything in place first, the right offer, the right business model, traffic diversification, and then the website is like the last piece of the jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, definitely. It's like you take a look at any of the big SaaS products in, a, in SEO, like they all have a... Yes, some of them might be better than other ones, but the actual personal brand and stuff like that, that they've built around it, or, or just the brand in general, it, they just come across being trustworthy. They're not just a, a website with no face, no name attached to it. Yeah, I think it's a good opportunity as well. I think we're going to look back in five or 10 years and go, YouTube was wide open right then. And a lot of people missed out on the opportunity. Whereas for example, for you guys are like, you've grown to what, 28,000 subscribers? Yeah. Since when? Like November, something like that? Or maybe August? November. Yeah. I think I'm on my 170th video and it's probably been about six months or so. It's wild to have that sort of growth. Yeah. It, it's, it's just consistency. You need to be consistently putting out videos, may, maybe not doing it as consistent, cons consistently as myself. But yeah, I've just decided, do you know what? I'm going to treat it like going to the gym. I'm going to do it once a day. I'm going to upload every single day. And there, there's times where like I've had a cold or something and I'm still uploading. You can hear me coughing, but just start doing, start putting the, start getting the reps out and you'll see the fruits of your labor. Yeah. hundred percent. The final part of that. So we've talked about the paradigm shift. We've talked about how the website might be actually the last piece of the puzzle how a lot of people probably need to change their business models if they're solely relying on affiliate marketing or if they're solely relying on ads. And then additionally, it's about creating a better offer and squeezing more money from the traffic you have. The final thing that I would say is if you look at the industry as a whole, we're always looking at, okay, what's happening right now and where's it going? And I feel like there's a lot of SEO dinosaurs out there. This is a polarizing statement, but there's a lot of dinosaurs out there who are stuck in the ways and won't adapt. And if you look at the way the AI is going, it's going to wipe out a lot of people over the next few years. Yeah, definitely. If you don't innovate, you're going to evaporate is the good old saying that James says, but it, it's true. Like there's endless amounts of content agencies that didn't use AI in their actual process and they ended up getting wiped out. Now. Should you be using AI for everything? Probably not. It probably does need a little bit of hand holding um, at times because we've seen it time and time again where it has got things wrong, for example. But yeah, it, it, you, you should be looking to speed things up with AI, whether that is with potentially helping it with your content briefs or giving it some form of prompts to essentially maximize your, your output day in, day out. Yeah, the final thing that I would say on that, and this is just touching on personal branding, is like a lot of people that I speak to, and I felt the same back in the day, is they don't want to put their face out there or they don't want to be in front of the camera. For example, if they're putting out content, say on Twitter, YouTube or YouTube shorts, and it's like, actually, if you take a step back there 
and you look at what's working, for example, if you take a couple of good examples here. So for example, income stream surfers, if you look at some of his top performing videos ever and some of my top performing videos ever, it like, didn't even show my face, didn't even edit the contents. So you don't need any fancy editing or production value. And even some of my top performing videos, and I've seen this on other channels too, they don't even have a proper microphone. It's just, you can get AI to help you all this. You can get AI to edit the content. You can get AI to put studio sound on. You can make the content really interesting just by what's on the screen and sharing it, not by necessarily having your face on there. Yeah, definitely. There's, so I've been watching YouTube videos, like the, the, there was these YouTube videos that I thought they were really interesting. They were like conspiracy theories, history videos and stuff like that. And I've probably been watching like, I don't know, a few every week and stuff. And fast forward six months until two weeks ago, I realized that they're all faceless YouTube videos and the, the script writing's really good. Just everything around it's really good. So you, you can go down that route. Now, will faceless videos work for everything? Probably not. If you do it at, at low quality, they're probably not going to get that many views, but for example, if you're spending time and money on the script, if you're actually potentially doing the actual voice recording yourself, then it, it could definitely work. You just need to be a little bit creative when it comes to stuff like that. Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to get a free SEO strategy session where we can show you one-to-one -one how to improve your SEO strategy, how to make more money from the traffic you get, how to rank better. We can answer your questions live on the call and basically personalize everything that we've talked about today live on a call with you. Feel free to book that. Link's in the comments and description. If you haven't already, make sure you check out the SEO Elite Circle because we actually have a traffic diversification mastery section right here that shows you 11 ways to get traffic without relying on Google. And additionally, we have the YouTube SEO course. And let me pull that up for you. So it's right here. I know, Kazri, you pretty much went through the course. In fact, you were in this course. Right. We recorded a video together, your case study, yeah, and how yeah. you grew your channel as well with YouTube. So if you just want a really efficient way to grow a YouTube channel to, to get traffic and diversify your traffic, feel free to check out the SEO Elite Circle links in the comments. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Cheers, Kazri. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Bye-bye.